Hey there, everybody. It's AJ with Outdoors Podcast. Today, we're doing a super long overdue video. I'm gonna walk you completely around and through our fully renovated 1993 Fleetwood Bounder Motorhome. For those of you that are new to the channel, thanks so much for stopping by. I hope you enjoy this tour of our Fleetwood Bounder full-time home on the road. I'm gonna be walking you all around it and giving you an idea of what we've done to get it from where it started many, many years ago, probably four or five years ago now to where we have it today. Uh, if this is your first time checking out the channel, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. It really helps out the channel and you guys won't miss any content like this moving forward. And then if you get to the end of the video and you really like it, give me that thumbs up button. It definitely helps us move the channel forward and I'd really, really appreciate it. So let's get into walking around this girl, Doris the Slow Loris. Now, Doris is a 1993 Fleetwood Bounder Class A motorhome. Now, for those of you that may have seen a number of different motorhomes on the market, Class C's would be what you see with a cab over sleep design over the front kind of, of a truck. Uh, then you've got Class B's, which are more of kind of a, an oversized van, but sometimes look like a scaled down version of a Class A like this is. And then you've got the Class A's. Uh, this P30 chassis was built in 1992 and it features a 7.4 liter, 454 cubic inch V8 gasoline motor. <laughs> we also have an Onan 4000 generator on board, which generates all the electricity that we would need to run the coach full time, as well as the air conditioner, the microwave, anything that we'd want. Oh, yeah. uh, behind it, we pulled this 2006 Jeep Grand Cherokee and I'll show you that a little bit later in a different video, as well as how we do the pulling, but let's walk around the coach a little bit and then we'll talk about the paint scheme. Uh, the coach itself has six tires total, two in the front, four in the back, two on each side. Obviously, it's got a 16 foot awning that we've replaced the awning material. I'll put the link to the manufacturer for the awning material. It was really inexpensive and the process of changing it out was actually surprisingly easy. Uh, we coated the entire top with three gallons of Flex Seal. We had some major water problems when we first acquired the bus, and that has surprisingly held for five years. I'm not saying it's the way to do it, but it has definitely worked for us. So if you've got some water problems, in the short term, it might be a good solution. Uh, we have replaced the front tire since we got the bus. I'm anticipating having to replace the back tires in the coming years. But one of the things that you should be aware of as a new motorhome owner, this is something that I learned after we bought this RV, you'll see how short the wheelbase is compared to the full length of the RV. Now this has some advantages, for example, in the length of the space that we can turn or do a U-turn, uh, which has proved useful in a couple of places where we've missed turns. However, having this big, huge back end means that we can't go through real big dips. And so any kind of a place that's got a big dip to get into a campsite is off limits for us. We will ground out and have a really difficult time getting out of there based on how heavy we are. And in big winds, having such a short wheelbase, but being so big and tall and flat, it really makes it challenging going down the road in states like South Dakota and Wyoming. So just something to know if you're shopping for your first RV, wheelbase compared to your total length makes a difference and you've just got to know what's going to work for your functionality. So um, we have done some little things on the outside like this little uh, D-ring here, I-ring that we've got to hold our dog leashes, things like that. All of these cabinets below have various pieces of equipment or different outdoor gear that we use, uh, dog food and different things like that, coolers, all that kind of stuff. We've got a generator on the other side. And let's take a quick walk around to the other side just so you can kind of get a full wrap around of the bus. Now, for those of you that may ask, this big box and pipe here is a fly fishing rod holder that normally goes on the Jeep. We haven't been using it much lately, so I went ahead and took it off just so the Jeep is a little less inconspicuous. That's our Starlink satellite system. I'll do a separate video on the Starlink system. It's absolutely incredible. We've really loved having it on the road. As you can see, we've got our sewer pipe here that's going up into our sewer container. Out of there is our Starlink wire that's coming down. And then we've got water access here as well, along with our electrical cable. So you can kind of just get a full feel for the bus as we walk around. And for those of you purists that I know, it's not a bus, all right? Get off your high horse, it's okay. 
Engine is accessible from inside and from the front there along with our batteries. Really fantastic view when you're driving around. Let's go ahead and take a look inside and you can get a feel for what we've done there. Oh, before I go inside, let's talk about the paint. So the paint was a really fantastic thing to do, but also enormously grueling and backbreaking labor. I just wanna be really upfront. We did all of the paint on this coach ourselves and we hand stripped all of the decals and the stripes. We sanded the entire bus, or I should say Sarah sanded the entire bus from front to back, to top to bottom uh, with a hand sander. And we probably have 60 to 80 hours of prep work uh, between one or two people going into this. We spent an entire week, 15 hour days working on this. And then we hand rolled it with uh, Sherwin-Williams Super House Paint and or Superior House Paint. I'll put the link to the paint down below. I know it's been difficult to find lately, um, but that is what we used. It's held up for a year plus now and it looks great. It's been not as easy to clean as a really polished, really highly buffed uh, professional paint job. But guys, for us, this is what we could afford to do. And it has definitely made it available for us to be able to go into campgrounds that we would not have been able to go into otherwise because in our old paint scheme the rv really looked old and outdated and this has really allowed us to have a much more modern look and feel and really get into places that i don't think would have allowed us otherwise all right everybody welcome to the inside of doris the slow loris and let's start at the front i'll show you what we've done and i'll move our way to the back we've painted the entire inside of the bus top to bottom back to front all this beautiful white color just created this really simple palette there uh, or foundation that we could kind of build off of and then as you'll be able to see throughout the video sarah's done just an absolutely incredible job really making it feel homey with all the little individual touches so all of the cabinets did come like this but like i said we painted them white we've updated the hardware both on the front of the cabinets as well as the pistons on the inside of the cabinets which makes things really really nice for all of your kind of daily use we've got food in a number of these cabinets and then just kind of personal day-to-day -day items in a lot of the other cabinets fly tying equipment stuff like that so moving around to kind of the cockpit area these seats both swivel this one normally kind of just stays like that this one is typically moved around when we're in camp for a couple of days. And what we've done is build some of these little personal kind of valets on each side so that we've got somewhere for cup holders uh, and for personal items, things like that. We've got pretty analog gauges. Everything's pretty much the same old school battery levels, water tanks, all that kind of stuff. But we've been able to maintain all of that stuff really reasonably. Now, what you'll see out the front of a Class A, this is one of the things that we love so much about a Class A. When you're driving down the road, you have this massive view out the front. And even when you're in camp, especially if you've got beautiful vistas like this one does, I mean, what a great way to wake up and have your coffee in the morning, but still be in the comfort of your RV. Up above there, you'll see that little black box is a rear view camera that uses a uh, Bluetooth signal for the camera in the back that I did have to wire into some power, but we have really nice uh, rear view mirror driving down the road, even though we've got a 30 foot long coach. So turning around here, all the dog stuff is kept up here. Uh, in these two cabinets, we've got a 23 inch TV. I'm looking to upgrade that eventually, but that's just mounted on this little shelf that we built out of a spare piece of butcher block from the kitchen, which I'll show you here shortly. Our dog area is down here. We've got a couple of dog beds that are stacked one on top of each other, along with all their toys and their water bowl. We bring their food bowls out when it's time to actually eat. Uh, above the door, Sarah came up with the idea to have these great little baskets. We've got lights and uh, we've got dog stuff, leashes, balls, things like that. All that stuff kind of lives up there. And then we've got a bunch of hooks for keys and things like that. Uh, the kitchen, we did a ton of work to. We painted all of the lower cabinets with some interior house paint. We made a new countertop out of a piece of butcher block that we got from Ikea and cut to the template of the one that we removed. We've got a new uh, faucet as well. So we kind of did all of this work ourselves in my basement with really limited tools. So if you guys are thinking about doing renovation projects, jump in, trust me, it's worth it. You'll learn a ton while you go. And if you screw something up, you just start over. It's not that big a deal. Uh, and the upper cabinets, we don't try to fill these things to the brim with every single cup and plate you could possibly have. We keep it pretty minimalist and it really fits our needs. Uh, for any of you out there that are thinking about living in an RV or being in an RV, highly suggest these little collapsible silicone Tupperware containers. Fantastic, a stack like this tall, uh, 
will pretty much cover everything that you need for full-time RV living. Uh, we've got a four burner stove under here, as well as a full oven. And that is big enough to cook frozen pizzas. We've done uh, cinnamon rolls and all kinds of fun stuff in there. Over here in the dinette area, this is probably where we've spent the most carpentry work. Now, for those of you that are familiar with the channel or anybody that's seen the old video, you'll see that, uh, and I'll put some videos, some photos here. When we got the RV, this area was completely gutted. It was water damaged. It was completely uh, trashed. And we've gone through a couple of iterations. We had a more classic dinette that worked quite well for a while, but we really felt like this would make a better use of the space and give us a lot more floor space, which was really, really important for us. Uh, just in having a couple of dogs, no slides. This is a pretty narrow hallway that comes down through here and it doesn't give us a lot of space to pass each other. So this really became the solution. This is simply an Ikea desk that we bolted to the ground with some little L brackets. You can kind of see them down through there. Uh, and then I built this little cabinet just out of some really inexpensive wood. And what that allowed us to do was to A, have a couple of areas for some storage for our EB70 Blue Eddy battery pack back there, but also the battery inverter and charger, uh, as well as we built ourselves this great chip out trash can because our dog Deacon, as many of you know, likes to get into trash cans. So uh, that worked out really well. When I'm working or when we're eating, we just get to have this beautiful view. You've got the mountains out there. A lot of times we've got rivers. It's just really a fantastic place to work. Gives great light for video calls. And then quite frankly, what we do is one of these tip down blinds or these, uh, these fold down blinds, I can actually move to these silver hooks that you see up in the ceiling and it gives me a video backdrop. And then Sarah actually has a way to walk behind that so she can move throughout the bus throughout me being able to work and have some privacy with my customers. So uh, I think Sarah's done an absolutely fantastic job just with the little touches, making it feel really, really homey in here. And this is one of her great finds. This was a Facebook marketplace find. I want to say we got this couch for like a couple hundred bucks and it's been a great alternative to the jackknife futon that came in the RV originally. Uh, I'll leave the, the model for this Ikea couch down in the description. I don't know if it's one that they currently sell, but I'll do my best to keep you informed. This actually folds out into a queen size bed and then we have a ton of storage underneath for our camping quilts, which is really nice because we don't have to keep those compressed. We can keep them big and lofted and it gives us tons of space for all of that kind of, kind of gear. So moving back into the rear of the RV or a little ways back, as many of you know, the original owners of the RV or the previous owners ripped out the microwave. Uh, we put the microwave back in or put a microwave back in. We've been super happy we did that. Uh, here we've got a really nice size fridge. As you can see, we can have all kinds of really good food, full size items, cheese, meat, all that kind of thing. And then we've got a really good size freezer up above as well. Uh, moving back into the bedroom and then we'll stop at the bathroom towards the end. We built this queen size bed platform. It's got tons of storage underneath for camping gear and winter clothes or off season clothes and extra shoes, things like that. Really nice to be able to have all of that extra storage as well as Sarah has storage for her shoes kind of tucked under the, the end of the bed. We've got a little area for Sarah's personal items. And then down below, we built this great little nightstand that's got room for electronics and chargings and things like that that we need to do over the course of the evening. Hooks really become kind of the name of the game in RV living. And so we've got hooks all over the place in the RV, tons of them on the back of this door, in the shower. You're always looking for places to dry things. Uh, Sarah's done such a good job, like I said, really making it homey in here. And then all of these curtains really make it nice for nighttime. We've got all of our clothes neatly stacked up above and then additional storage. Each one of us have one of these wardrobe areas and an upper cabinet area where we can organize socks, hats, extra shoes, things like that. And then the place where I think Sarah really outdid herself was here in the bathroom. Uh, when we got the RV, this entire area was trashed, water damaged. This entire wall had to be ripped out. The cabinet itself had to be ripped out. So we rebuilt this cabinet out of, again, some simple wood that we got from like you know, Home Depot or Lowe's. This countertop is a piece of pine that we bought for $9. I think the sink was also pretty inexpensive as well as the faucet. And then Sarah's just done an incredible job. She hand painted all of this stenciling on the back of this new kind of wallboard 
And then we've got ourselves a dry shower, which is super nice. We don't have to get everything in the shower wet or everything in the bathroom wet, uh, along with plenty of room to hang things. And then on the rear here, we've got just a shoe organizer that we use for soaps, shampoos, conditioners, things like that. Keeps everything really nicely organized. And then we've got our full Thetford toilet. Super, super nice. And we've had zero issues with that thing so far. So knock on wood. I got to say, one of the big pieces that I got to say is uh, a huge win for this year. And one of our big acquisitions has been this Air Pure or sorry, Air Plus dehumidifier. This is a 30 liter model. Uh, it's about knee height or so, if I had to guess. And it is really helping us keep the humidification down in the bus when we're in these really damp environments like we are here in Oregon. And I just can't thank that little sucker enough for doing its job. So if you've got any questions on the RV, what we've done to it, what kind of renovations we have, please leave me a comment, ask me a question, show me some of the examples of what you've done with your RVs. This has been an absolute journey that I would not ever go back and, uh, regret doing. I've absolutely enjoyed every little bit of this and it just couldn't be more fun all along the way. So uh, if you've got any questions, feel free to ask them. Otherwise, hit that like button, hit the subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next video.